be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, brought us back to his Father, and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will, you separated light from darkness on this the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and thank and celebrate, proclaiming, Blessed are you, for you appeared in the flesh on earth like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving hope to all, and you filled the angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and thank you for your graces and glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
O Lord, accept the fragrance of our incense and of our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and through our actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory, now and forever. Amen. Kaddishat Aloha. Shout with joy from the mountains, Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Barach Morabun. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, so we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him sin, to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We cause no one to stumble in anything, in order that no fault may be found with our ministry. On the contrary, in everything we commend ourselves as ministers of God, through much endurance, in afflictions, hardships, constraints, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, vigils, fasts. 
by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, in a holy spirit, in unfeigned love, in truthful speech, in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness at the right and at the left, through glory and dishonor, insult and praise. We are treated as deceivers and yet are truthful, as unrecognized and yet acknowledged, as dying and behold, we live, as chastised and yet not put to death, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet enriching many, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Praise be to God always. the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity, and the same saints. Before the proclamation of the Gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The evangelist Luke writes, and Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the entire region. He taught in their synagogues, and he was praised by all. But he came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and he went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath. He stood up to read, and he was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free, and in order to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. And rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant, and he sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently upon him. And he said to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the truth, peace be with you.
we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now, this letter of St. Paul, what he's doing in laying out to the Corinthians is the idea that is there is a moment of grace being given to us and time passes. Life is short. We all know people who have died and their lives are finished and that moment is done. And St. Paul is saying, do not receive the assistance, the grace of God. When he says in vain, it means in emptiness that it touches the soul and simply slides off if you want. Grace is not meant to be kind of that ice cream on a hot fudge sundae just kind of, or the, on a fudge brownie just sliding off the side of it. But for many of us, that's exactly what it is. It hits us, we're heated up by something else, and it just, it's gone. Oh, maybe there's a bit of vanilla slime on the side of us for a moment, and then it's gone. So this is the idea of the vanity, to receive the grace of God, to receive the divine touch, and then it's empty, vain. Vanitas in Latin just means emptiness. So what St. Paul wants us to understand, and we've talked over these weeks as we consider the different stages of what it is in the Catholic and the spiritual life, the primary aspect is vision, sight, the ability to see where we're going and what we're doing. You know, a lot of people, when they're serious about their spiritual life, it's all about sin, all the things I have to avoid. And this is very sad, actually. It's the equivalent of trying to be healthy by trying not to be sick. It doesn't do much. I'll just stay home and not be sick. I'm not getting sick. And so the spiritual life of just trying to avoid sin, it misses the whole point. It is a question of vision. How do I see the world? How do I see my life? And with that being the purpose, of course, then we have motivation. We know where we're going. We have intention. We watch some of those times, we watch the Olympic, people when they prepare for the Olympics. The hours and hours and hours and hours each day that they will use in just preparation for a moment, six years from now. And that preparation is because they see that moment of those games, which is why, in, in fact, in 2020, they've all been devastated because they've just put in years of work and it's just been totally upended. So they're quite disappointed, obviously. But that vision is necessary of where I'm going. Then we have the intention and the motivation. And when we have the motivation, we do the things we need to do. And in the spiritual life, that's a virtue to pursue the imitation of Christ. And then sin, it's at the end. It'll take care of itself. I won't do those things that are wrong because I'm so absorbed already by the vision of where I'm going and what I'm doing in imitating Christ. That is the reception of grace, which is not vain, but is fruitful. And we all know famously of Pope Francis over the last years referring to the church as being a field hospital. And that's very much a classical vision. It may not be so Western, but it's a very classic Eastern vision of the church. The church is simply our Lord in the Eastern vision. Now, oftentimes, especially in the West, we, we kind of think of the church as being like this enormous international NGO. And we happen to belong to the club. Now, a lot of people belong to the club. Some are active members and some not so active. But it is so much more than that. It is so much more than an organization that just has a CEO in Rome. It is our Lord Jesus Christ but it, at his divinity in his humanity present among us in this generation. And the same way that in Nazareth, the people are drawn to him, actually in Nazareth they try to kill him, but in the other synagogues we're told in the gospel today of St. Luke, he's praised by all. It's when he gets back home that things are going to be a problem. And that's what always in the church in every generation, as in the generation when God himself appeared in time, some people are drawn to the light. They desire to see, to be healed of blindness. 
And then there are others who do not want that and they get pushed further into darkness. And that has been the history of the world since our Lord and it will be the history of the world until the day of judgment. And so the field hospital idea is the church goes from generation and generation picking up those who are bleeding and bloodied and laying all around this valley of tears. And we drag them in. The others who are a little more able-bodied drag them into the field hospital and they're healed. It is that movement towards our Lord. So we can actually look at the church as a way of being an image that I give you this morning of a magnet. St. John in his Gospels makes it very clear that our Lord's presence, our Lord's death, is to gather together, he says literally, to gather together all the children of God who are scattered throughout the world. That vision of St. John is that the presence of our Lord and his death and the healing that is possible brought is to gather in together to draw all those who are destined to be the children of God, who are already the children of God by that selection. They are drawn as a magnet toward the church. And within that church, sight is given. That is the first thing that is given to us, is to be able to see. And then when we see that whole thing, our intentions, our motivation, where we're going, how we're going, and what we're doing. So that notion of being brought into the church, whether as a hospital or drawn towards a magnet by grace, that whole movement has the idea that the ultimate purpose is to be immersed within the divine reality, to be drawn closer and closer into the life of Christ and plunged into the divine mysteries. We talk about this a bit in the bulletin today. That the real goal of the spiritual life is obviously not just simply to avoid sin, but it is to be divinized, to be transformed and to be immersed within God which is why we've often mentioned over these last few months. The mysteries cannot be transmitted by a computer screen. You can look at them, and they may help you in your personal prayer at home, but it is not contact with the mysteries. And I'm afraid, yes, you know, another year of this, and a lot of people will be quite happy just be sitting home in their pajamas with a cup of coffee and a cigarette watching, a, watching mass, and thinking that is the same thing, which of course it's not, because it has to be this contact with our Lord. So this is what St. Paul means when he looks at this question of to receive the grace of God not in vain, not fruitlessly, but in a fruitful manner. And that's why he says we are ambassadors for God, as it were, in this letter to the Corinthians that as God through us soliciting you, encouraging you to be reconciled with God. Now this word of reconciliation we have in English, I mean it's thrown all over the place, they use it nonstop. But the word literally means the action of being brought together again in the same council, that we think the same way. We use the word reconciliation meaning, oh there's been a huge knockout drag out and you have to fix up the fight. That's not really what reconciliation means. It's much more profound than that. Reconciliation literally means to bring us back into the same mindset. So when St. Paul says to the Christians in Corinth that I solicit, I encourage you to be reconciled with God, it's to find your mind in sync with the divine plan, to find our minds in sync with the divine intellect. That is part of the vision to be able to see. And so really the grace that we look at is this the desire, and it should be part of our daily prayers, that we may see more and more profoundly, more and more clearly as time goes on. Because time is going to end for us, and life is short, relatively speaking. And any effort that we have to put into this path is nothing compared to eternity. And so St. Paul is saying, use the time that you have. And of course, the people to whom that letter were written, they've been dead for thousands of years now. And someday, we will be dead 
for thousands of years. So what do you do with the 87 that you get? And of course, for the people who are under 25, 87, being 30 it sounds like forever. So we say, what do you do when you're 30, when you're 35? I was notified two weeks ago, and it was in the bulletin for Mass for last Saturday for the intentions. There was a young man whose name was Justin Schulte. Well, when I knew him in the parish when I was working in Idaho, he was just a kid in the school. And so one of the parishioners wrote me, because 27 years later, he died at 35. Young family, young wife, little children, massive heart attack. 35 years. So everybody who's here who can hear my voice, 35 is kind of short. And for those of us who are well over 35, think about where we'd be in eternity if we had died in our 35th year. That God has given us more years because he's asking us for us to see and to be reconciled. Be in sync with what my mind is, God says. And when you're in sync, you will find that peace and you will find that security. And this is why to leave you with the one thought is we're talking about the stages of the spiritual life, the very foundation of all of this movement and growth and maturation in the faith is precisely because of the faith. St. John of the Cross makes it very clear that in order for us to find salvation, it has to be union with God. That is the healing point of the center of all existence. And therefore, to attain to that position, we have to have a means proportionate. Someone may want, you know, these little kids who may want to go to the moon and stand around and jump around in the backyard, it's never going to happen because you're not going to have any of the proper means proportionate arriving there. The means for us to arrive at something, it's not just simply inefficacious desires. Nobody on the face of the earth would say, I would love to rot and burn for eternity in hell. No one's ever going to say that. But the idea of finding God is an inefficacious desire in so many people. And what I mean by that, there's a proper word, a technical word for it. We call it a velaite. The Latin word vele means to will. Veleitas means the quality of willing. But the term velaite is used. It's in French. They just have it, velaite. But velaite in English is the idea of I'd like to do something, but I'm not going to do anything to accomplish it. I'd love to have my retirement home in Florida. And your mom talks about that for the last 45 years. We're going to have a retirement home and, and nothing is ever done. Your parents never go down and look at properties. They, they just always talk about it. And in the end, are they ever going to be in a retirement home in Florida? Of course not. It is an inefficacious desire. It is an inefficacious act of will. They may think about it. They may dream about it. They may just get warm and tingly about it. But in the end, nothing happens. And that is God for a major part of humanity. Wouldn't it be nice to find salvation? Wouldn't it be nice to go to heaven? And then I do nothing. That is the reception of the grace of God in vain, in emptiness. And so what St. John of the Cross and the fathers of the church want us to understand is that the means must be proportioned to their ends. And in order to reach that union with God, insofar as it's possible even now, because salvation begins today, remember the epistle, now is the time of salvation. Now is the opportune time. Not next week, not last week, that's already gone. But now is that the faith is what begins to make us in proximate resemblance to God. It moves us into that light because of vision. And it's this theological faith 
which is the absolute necessity. Because St. John winds up reminding us that it is about God as being known within the knower, within me, to be able to see. So next week, we're going to talk about the unitive stage. So if it was complicated enough with proficient stage and the stage of beginners, hopefully it won't be 120 years, 120 degrees, so that our brains are all becoming gelatinous. But next week, we will try to touch on that last moment of the transformation that takes place of the soul, is meant to take place of the soul here below, not just simply in the beatific vision. We touch on some of the points in the bulletin this week to kind of prep you, because it takes a while for us to wrap our minds around. But that vision, that sight, that reconciliation with God, it is all rooted fundamentally within theological faith that we come to know God within the knower, which is why, since God is infinitely transcendent, that knowledge will always be dark. That knowledge will always be obscure because of us. We're not able to receive all of that. But it doesn't stop Paul, St. Paul from saying to the Corinthians, I urge you, I encourage you to be reconciled, enter into sync with the divinity, to be reconciled to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten. Telvot ma debhe daloho, alvot aloho dam hade tanyu. Venet silva taiva tao feo lal vaita questudem haye klo, ato ne
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754. 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and with divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to your server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
O Lord, may your peace and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim, who sing with pure voices and with heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify, and proclaim. Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. Waksuya bilatal mi tau karamar Sabakhulam mehne kulkhu Khunu deni tau Fakhuru dil Dakhlu faikun wakhlub sagiye Me taqasayu me tihab Khusuyum Home Praise 
and ever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. And to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you Since he may make this bread the body of Christ our God, Amen. and make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God, Amen. may these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your Church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shada Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have Remember, O Lord, all those that please you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Mary, St. Joseph, St. Jude, assist us in their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the 
faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Us pardon, O God, and forgive us on the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and be made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, to Him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by the Holy Body, and our souls purified Give 
We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Peace be with you. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. So just a reminder that those who wish to remain in the church, you can stay as long as you'd like to pray. Those who wish to visit, socialize, please to go out to the sidewalks. And may the Lord God, the Bright One, increase your faith and deepen your vision every single day of your lives. It is beautiful to see you all. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and the blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.